everyone, it's me, Leo Bond, back again today with another Force FX lightsaber review. And this time what I have is the latest from Hasbro's The Black Series. It's Obi-Wan Kenobi's Blue Bladed Episode 4 lightsaber. So what we're going to do is I'll give you a few key specs. We'll run through some information like weights and measurements. I'll show the hilt up close. We'll really take a good look at this thing. Later on in the video, we'll hit outside for a little bit of a lights and sounds demo. And hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a pretty good idea of whether or not you want to add this lightsaber to your collection. So let's switch up perspectives and take a closer look starting right now. Okay, let's address this saber's most egregious issue right off the bat so that we can get it over with. And that, of course, is the problem of the overly thick neck that we also saw in Luke Skywalker's Episode 6 saber. And as much as I dislike these really thick necks, it's pretty much just something that we're going to have to learn to live with. If it is a total deal breaker for you, then there's really no need to even consider this saber further because it's just going to continue to bug you and probably just about ruin the experience of owning it. And honestly, that's probably where I am on this one myself. Even though this saber in virtually every other way is just about as close to perfect as it can get. But I don't like the thick necks because I want some Something that's as movie accurate as possible and as a pure movie replica these thick necked sabers just fail. Now with that being said if we didn't know that this saber was supposed to have a thin neck we would probably look at it and say wow that thing is beautiful and sure enough it really is it looks great it just doesn't look right. So with the major complaint about this saber now out of the way, what can we find to discuss that's good about it? Well, the grip on this saber is one of the best, if not the best, that I've seen so far. It not only looks good, but it's also very comfortable and easy to hold on to, whether you're swinging the saber around or just holding it casually. And I also really like the on-off switch on this one. It's just a simple slide switch, so up for on and down for off, but its shiny gold color looks really nice when it catches the light. And there's lots of other nice detail on the hilt as well. I really like the balance of colors between the black and the sort of chrome metal you know it's also interesting that the section between the grip and the copper colored neck is sort of slightly different it's a different metallic shade than the pommel or the area around the switch or the emitter and even in spite of its thick neck I think it's definitely one of the better looking hilts in the series thus far. Now, the battery situation for this saber is exactly the same as the Episode 6 Luke Skywalker saber, so three AAA batteries rather than the double A's that Luke's Episode 4 saber used, and the battery pack also works in exactly the same way as with Luke's green saber. It's basically just two separate pieces that are held together by a small Phillips head screw, so you'll have to unscrew the two sections to either put batteries in or take them out and as long as you have a proper screwdriver this only really takes a few seconds to do and then you're ready for battle. Now, as for the weight and measurements of this saber, it's actually a good bit heavier than either of the Luke sabers that I reviewed a while back. The heaviest of those was the green one at about 676 grams, and the blue one was quite a bit lighter than that again at just under 630 grams, whereas this Kenobi saber comes in at around 750 grams or 1.65 pounds, and most of that weight is in the hilt which is of course mostly if not entirely made of metal. Now as for the length, this saber is pretty close to those others at just under 44 inches in overall length with an exactly 11 inch hilt length. And I have to say that even with a bit of extra weight that this thing has, this saber is very easy to handle and it does feel pretty good to hold. In fact, the hilt seems very solid and the blade is also seated nicely with no wobble or looseness or anything like that. So it's really fun to swing this thing around and mess with it. One thing that isn't so good, however, is the fact that Obi-Wan's saber comes with the same subpar stand that every saber in the Black Series has come with so far. But unlike, say, Luke's blue-bladed saber from Episode 4, this one can't even balance on the stand when the stand is sitting in that arched position because the point of balance for this thing is actually somewhere inside the hilt. And the hilt itself is, of course, an irregular shape that just can't be crazy in the stand and it just ends up falling off so this time around the stand is even more useless than ever before update persistence pays off 
I finally got it to balance after quite a little bit of fiddling. Oh, and by the way, just in case anyone is wondering, the blade on this saber is not removable, which is kind of a shame, but what are you going to do? I would love to see Hasbro release some removable blade sabers in this line, but so far they're just not doing that. And anyway, finally, before we head outside for our little lights and sounds demo, I just want to quickly show the very tool-like pummel and the way that the battery pack meshes with it to allow the speaker external access. Okay, let's now take a quick look at the light and sound effects of this saber in the absolute pitch dark. And you can see right away that this saber is very, very bright and loud for that matter. And I also think that it looks somewhat more blue than the Episode 4 Luke Skywalker saber. At least that's how it seems to me and maybe I'm just perceiving it that way because I'm outside this time and normally I would do this part inside. But anyway, for the sound effects portion, I'll just stop talking here for a few seconds so that you can hear everything clearly. So I definitely think that Hasbro is using the exact same sound card in this Sabre that they've used for some of the other ones in the series. It just doesn't sound all that distinctive to me or new or anything, but then again I'm no expert on the differences in Sabre sounds across the various movies and whatnot, so I'll let you all be the judge of that kind of stuff. As for me, I am ultimately going to pass on this saber, mainly due to the inaccuracy of the neck, but I certainly wouldn't blame any of you if you wanted to overlook that one little snafu and pick this bad boy up. Well, that's all I've got to say for now about Old Ben Kenobi's lightsaber. I do hope that you found the video useful, or at least interesting, and if so, please give it a like or a share, and subscribe as well if you enjoy this sort of content, by which I mean video reviews of toys and all sorts of different tech gadgets. That's all I've got to say for now. I would like to thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you back here the next time. Until then, have an excellent day, and I'll see you soon.